Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, November 18th, 2022. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Your likes, your shares, uh, your comments is what keeps this channel going. So let's keep this channel going and more people will see this video if you hit the like button. So once again, please don't forget to do that. Uh, stocks are at resistance. Uh, we'll examine if short sellers will fall into what's called the bear trap. I'll explain what that means. I will show you very short term analysis for S&P 500 on hourly charts. So it's it's really like days ahead, not, not even weeks. Um, Japanese stock markets give another buy signal. So uh, possibly the rest of the world will follow dollar is retesting a recent support break um, let's see if this is indeed the top so far gold has failed uh, to get above resistance so we'll see if this relationship is going to continue holding between dollar and gold bitcoin is pausing i think on the way to zero if you are a subscriber stay tuned we have a lot of stocks to cover this week um, if you're not a subscriber Consider signing up by going to the description, uh, clicking the link in the description of, of the video and signing up for one of the packages. So throughout the presentation, I'll be using my uh, proprietary MasterChartsTrading.com price action indicators. You can see them on this chart. This is the green, blue, red and yellow lines. So this chart is what's called a candlestick chart. Notice where I'm hovering. This is a what's this is a tradingview.com interface. See tradingview.com. Uh, if you have a free tradingview account uh, and sign up on my site, you will have you'll be able to get the same indicators on your on your chart, so you can follow along. Um, this indicator is basically I use them uh, exclusively to trade, and they tell me pretty much what I need to know about the stocks, uh, whatever I'm trading. Is that is the security first of all in an uptrend or a downtrend? So let's look at this security, which is S and P 500, and let's try to figure out is it in an uptrend or a downtrend. And of course, we need to define the downtrend. So the downtrend, the way I define it, is notice on this chart, uh, the four lines, and here on April 29th of this year, uh, the security S and P 500. This is a stock closed below this yellow line that means now it, it made this new sort of low and now we're going to say that this security is in a downtrend and then we will treat it as such uh, to be in a downtrend until we'll see a close above this blue support resistance line now just trust me on this you know don't have to know exactly how they're calculated they are calculated there's a code here um, the code is hidden uh, but let's just go with it okay so until or if when we, we close above the blue line we will say that this security is still in a downtrend and notice that in a downtrend we need to do the opposite of buying which is selling or in this case we will do in short selling so notice the beginning of a downtrend in April of this year a first new low here in May on Friday 20th of May I'm reading it right off the chart and then a bounce to this red support resistance line so this is where we want to sell short and we did that um, and it was quite successful another bounce started with a low uh, here in 16th of June Thursday 16th of June and a nice big rally unfolded into August eventually we topped out here on August 16th of this year and rolled over again so now we got another short signal on uh, Friday the 26th of August we sold it here as well for a small profit and yet again another uh, short sale opportunity happened on um, 13th of September we sold it here again for a nice big profit however here you can see on October 13th of this year we had what's called a hammer candlestick why is it a hammer because it looks like a hammer it has a, a big uh, green um, body of the hammer and the uh, white 
a little shadow at the top, a long shadow at the top. So that's a hammer candlestick. It just looks like a hammer. Hammer candlesticks are um, indicative of a bottom. And indeed, this is what happened so far. Uh, we bottomed here on 13th of October and rallied. Um, we had a br initial breakout here um, on uh, beginning of October, I mean October, 19th of October. We retested this back, uh, retested this breakout, and it was very successfully where I'm hovering on uh, 3rd of November and 4th of November. We touched this yellow support resistance line and again rallied. Was actually, one day was a super strong rally here on uh, Thursday, November 10th. That's last Thursday. So since then, we once again have been bouncing around this red support resistance line. And as I just showed you, this has been a wonderful opportunity for short sellers to sell, to sell here, short sellers. They, they sell, so they borrow the stock, they sell it at the current price, and then once the stock uh, drops, they uh, buy it back and pocket the difference. Now, so far we are um, bouncing against about this line and we're not really decisively getting through it. Uh, we can also look on the weekly chart of the same uh, security and see if we got through. So yeah, we kind of got through last week, so Friday actually was pretty good close yes, on weekly chart. So if you're trading on weekly chart, change your setting to 52. See, my charts, uh, 52, length 52. Uh, and it's a weekly chart and then so far like this week we just kind of we tried to get above it but we failed so far so we're we're waiting and and seeing what's going to happen so sh you know before this was an opportunity to sell short um just going on my gut feeling i don't want to be selling short right now and this is where that whole bear trap comes in so if uh, we sold here, like for example, we sold here in August, um, then again in September. We were very correct to sell here because notice we made a really quite nice new low here uh, from October into November. However, do we want to do this again? And just my gut feeling is telling me that maybe not. So we're looking now at very short term charts. I'm going to switch this up. This is one hour chart. And um, on this chart, you can kind of see it's in faint, uh, but um, on November 16th, last Wednesday, I put in what's called a ghost feed. That's my projection. So at this time, the indicators actually were not yet available. At, this at that time, uh, the indicators were just up to here, up to 16th of November. And so I put in this ghost feed, and it's sort of supposed to bottom into the... Uh, Sunday, um, but notice where the bottom is. It's at this level 3857. So, why is that important level? Notice that 3857 was the top from uh, November 8th, Tuesday, November 8th. So, let's look at that date, Tuesday, November 8th, right there where I'm hovering. I'm going to zoom into that price action. That's right there, November 8th. So I think this is the breakout above that particular level that occurred on Thursday, uh, November 10th. Right there, big candlestick. We broke above this level. We actually, we actually broke above this previous level as well. So I think it is now reasonable to expect a pullback. And in fact, I drew this ghost feed into that level uh, and it's supposed to end there on Sunday. Um, now, so far I've been actually more or less correct. Um, the ghost feed did bottom around the uh, blue line right there on uh, 17th of November in the morning and then bounced again. Now, I didn't realize how, you know, this, this bounce was relatively strong, but I think, I think we're again, we're going to pull back more. So, depending on what's going to happen around this level, 3857, um, it's, it's going to be important to watch that level. I think we will touch it again, uh, 3857, but I don't think we will collapse through it. So this is um, the reason why I think we could be seeing a potential bear trap. So bear traps happen when we sell short and then the stock rallies. So you lose money, right? Bear trap. So let's see what happens in the next few days, but I, I would be kind of extra super duper cautious now 
uh, into the next few weeks, probably until uh, beginning of December. Um, and then let's see what happens. I think we will kind of make, you know, move lower a little bit and then uh, rally higher. So this is what, um, you know, was the next uh, slide I wanted to show Dow Jones Industrial Average. And actually one of the readers pointed out that I'm using using continuous futures here, YM, one exclamation point. And indeed, Dow Jones has closed above it. And even on Friday as well, we closed above that level just this Friday. However, if we use the actual um, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, uh, notice that we're touching this blue support resistance line and we haven't gotten above it. So we're just, just bouncing at it. So before... Um, notice what happened before uh, the resistance actually happened right at it. So Dow Jones came up all the way to the blue line here on Tuesday 16th of uh, August and then bounced off of it. Uh, I'm not making it up. You see, I'm going to zoom in it again. There again. Notice this two days right there, 16th of August and 17th of August. So will something like this happen now? Um, you know, it's it's entirely possible. Um, so we just need to wait and see. Uh, somehow I feel that this rally is different. <laughs> you know, famous last words. Some uh, This time is different. But it just feels different this time. So let's watch and see what happens. So with Dow Jones, um, some... Uh, uh, you know, our numbers are already showing that we did break above into a new bull market and some do not yet. So let's see what happens again in the next few days to few weeks. Uh, NASDAQ is, uh, bear, you know, uh, still lagging the general markets. Uh, notice that S&P 500 is above the red line. Dow Jones is next to the, you know, blue line and NASDAQ barely broke above the yellow line. So lots of room to work. Uh, however, once again, s and if S&P breaks out above the uh, blue support resistance line, then we're, we're done uh, with the bear market. So let me show you that level again. Uh, so blue, level, blue line is 4318, and this is the bull market above that level. So NASDAQ uh, lagging the general market, but, uh, you know, overall they're doing the same thing, basically. Uh, Russell 2000 small cap singles index notice the way the indicators are curving down um, so this is I'm going to turn on the projection of the indicators into the future notice that the indicators are curving down and even the lowest point will be reached right there 18th of Wednesday uh, January the 18th of Wednesday so I think we it is reasonable to expect um, the stocks to at least trade sideways uh, now what's important about this chart is the way the indicators are cur curving down towards the price action. This implies that um, there is less uh, work for the price that needs to happen to get above the bullish levels. And bullish levels are really not far off. Uh, if we imagine that, you know, from today's levels uh, until bullish levels, that's 5%. That's not far at all, you know, in the future. However, right this instant if we measure uh, the distance from today's prices towards bullish levels um, it is slightly higher it's uh, around 10 percent so notice that in the future this trading range will become tighter and usually during the uh, when the trading range the trading range tightens then uh, there is le there is more hope for the trend change to occur so right now the trend for the the security of the Russell 2000 is down, but in the future, there is less room um, for, for the price to travel to get to the other levels, to, to the bullish levels. In other words, it might change into a trend up at that point. So the, again, the important levels to watch, and this is another reason why I'm so reluctant to either buy or sell right now, because so we're just not really doing much right now. Uh, however, looking at some of the foreign foreign markets, uh, here's the Japanese, Japan 225, uh, symbol JP225 USD. So this is a contract for difference. Um, not available in the United States to trade, but it's still a uh, good indicator to watch, and it's a live, uh, live future chart. So notice that support was held, 
actually we have to go back um, notice that the bear market um, didn't really end back here in march of this year um, or rather, i'm so sorry yes in, indeed actually the breakout occurred right there initially uh, where i'm hovering on uh, in march of this year and yes we had big moves but uh, for example here in may uh, in uh, june and then again in uh, october price of the security came down towards this yellow they're bearish level so if it closed below that level we would ag again declare a bear market but that didn't happen so notice that support held on multiple occasions and right there on october 3rd actual support held uh, quite well as well so uh, now we're seeing a price surge from from september into now and again gave us another bullish signal right there on 10th of november so overall uh, japanese stock markets look pretty good um, and because of the correlations between various uh, securities let's look at the correlation between the japanese and uh, japanese stock markets and s p 500 so correlation down here in the yellow uh, part in yellow graph and notice it's very positive so by and large when when japanese markets go one way uh, s p 500 follows so it's reasonable to expect that this is a true breakout and perhaps japanese stocks are leading um, s p 500 higher let's move on to forex universe so dollar index um, possibly may have topped right there on wednesday 28th of september um, if you listen to my previous videos i was examining uh, the candlestick so this one right there wednesday 28th uh, another candlestick right there on the thursday 13th of october and right there friday 21st of october they were all bearish candlesticks uh, because of the shadow out of the top there and the red body big red body so that means the price failed to get up and then uh, bears or people who think that the price will come down sold until the end of the session so we have bearish several bearish candlesticks another pretty big red candlestick right there on friday november 4th and big lots of selling uh, especially on this two days thursday and last uh, last thursday and last friday now notice what notice what happened here we're down below this blue support resistance line so right this instant dollar is still technically in an uptrend because we haven't yet closed below this red line so for forex this is a forex or a continuous instrument i use the red support resistance line for stocks i use the yellow support resistance line as a bearish um, or downtrend indication so this particular uh, security dollar index needs to close below this red line at 1021 for it to be considered to be in a bear market in a downtrend it hasn't yet happened but now what, what's happening is i'm going to zoom in again on this action just um, break below this blue support resistance line on friday last friday november 11th and then uh, on monday we tried to get up above it didn't happen another opportunity for it to get up above it on thursday also didn't happen so two times already it bounced above that uh, at that level and failed to get up above, get up get up above it so we're looking right now for a close above 107.2 for to see if indeed we have tapped out if we have tapped out that means that means that this new long signal if it gets above the blue line and close above it it will become a bull trap so it's the opposite of bear trap you know we're gonna close above this blue line we're gonna buy because we think that the stocks will make uh, i'm sorry we, st we still we still think that the uh, the security is an uptrend and new highs are possible okay and then we close above it we buy and then what happens it turns around on us and it can continues lower that's a bull trap okay so let's see what happens um we're watching it very closely but right now it just doesn't look that great uh, we have multiple signals um rather not signals multiple signs that we're possibly tapping out so let's watch uh next few days especially this level at 1072 and see what happens uh by extension or other as a reverse a reverse of that uh, gold this is gold is doing the opposite it's, it's running into resistance whereas dollar broke support there's the bro broken support 
at the blue line, uh, gold is doing the opposite and it's running into resistance, it's trying to get up above this resistance. So this resistance is at the red line at, I'm reading it right off the chart, 1785, you see. So two times right there on Tuesday, uh, the 15th and Wednesday, the 16th of November, we tried to get above that level, so far we have failed. So let's see what happens to the dollar. If the dollar, um, if the dollar rallies, continues higher here, then gold will come under pressure. Why is that happening? Notice where I'm hovering, gold divided by US dollar. So if the US dollar part of this equation, the bottom part of this, part of this equation, gets stronger, then it will pull this currency pair lower. So let's see, if dollar strengthens, then maybe it's going to like make a new low. But I'm not so certain, um, and so we need to watch just regular, um, uh, you know, levels of resistance, uh, not my even lines, like for example, there's the great re great support resistance level um, at the um, high from Tuesday, October 4th, and see what happens there. Most likely we're going to see a pullback towards that level, possibly a couple of bounces there, and maybe a new rally. So it, it, all eyes are to the dollar, uh, if dollar uh, first gives us a bullish signal and then continues higher, then we need to watch uh, for a new high for the dollar. In that case, gold will most likely make a new low. And going on to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin really didn't do much. Uh, last week, uh, we can see uh, Bitcoin really just got demolished, really. So this is a weekly chart of the uh, Bitcoin right there on Monday uh, from last week, Monday, November 7th. Notice new lows, new closing low on a weekly basis. I mean, very weak. Um, this is a, right now, it's just basically trading sideways. Uh, but I think it's, uh, I think we're going to collapse uh, even further. I mean, I, I keep saying that Bitcoin could easily go to zero or maybe even negative uh, because of the negative uh, because this are f there are futures available uh, so it's possible that um, nobody will ever want Bitcoin and then it will just go negative. Okay, um, that's it for this week's recap. Please head over to startchartstrading.com, click on sign up. I have uh, two products and two packages. The best deal I think is to get both trading indicators and newsletters. So you will get this trading indicators which you can with which you can trade pretty much anything under the sun as long as our candlesticks open high low close. Um, and also my newsletter where I send out uh, daily alerts. For example, this week we covered quite a bit of stocks where I'm hovering, crude oil, natural gas, emerging markets, China, Lululemon, uh, Bumble, Dropbox, Sunrun. We're going to cover a lot of stocks this week, so we trade a lot. Um, you know, people can pick and choose what they want to trade. Uh, so that's two newsletters, daily uh, emails, and weekly uh, special videos. That's it for this week's recap. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. Have another great trading week. Bye-bye.